sneaker collabs are dead, or rather, they are dying. And a large part of that has to deal with the oversaturation of collaboration sneakers in the sneaker industry. But that all changes with the Reebok and Life with Ike duality shoe. My name is Isaac Reeves, aka Life with Ike, and I am all about unique, authentic storytelling. And any project that I start on begins with story. And that's what a lot of these collaborations are missing today. Story and authenticity. You see, collaborations have helped to drive sneaker culture, but now there's less emphasis on storytelling and authenticity and rather just partnering up with big name brand people and influencers to generate hype for a shoe and bring these large corporations all these amounts of money. And that's not gonna be the case with this collaboration shoe. I, mean, I grew up in New York and I've always been intrigued by two things, right? The style of the people who live in New York and the nightlife. And I knew going into this project that I wanted to combine the two to create a duality of sorts. So you heard my story growing up in New York and being inspired by the style of people in New York and the nightlife. Now let's look at a mood board that I created to express that, right? So we have a lot of these yellows popping out. I pulled a lot from the transportation with the yellow taxi cabs. Then we have the sunset, right? We have the gradient with the sunset. We have New York City nightlife and the glowing buildings. We have nice blues. We have tans from the architecture and these cream colors, nice and classy. And then you have the people on our mood board. We have Jerry Lorenzo, fashion icon, right? Devin on deck, a social media fashion icon, Tiana Taylor, rapper, a singer, songwriter, another fashion icon, Kirby Jean Raymond, right? New York native, partner with Reebok. He has his own clothing brand, Pierre Moss, fashion icon. Uses a lot of bold color blocking, represents New York City well. And so we have now our mood for what New York is, how we're going to use this for our collaboration shoe. And that drives our inspiration, right? And drives our visual direction. So the inspiration for this shoe is clearly New York City, uh, my home for over 15 years. But I really want to truly capture the heart and essence in this design as opposed to just basic New York City type colorways that you see in other company, um, other brand shoes, right? Now, it's also inspired by the Classic Leather's original target audience. According to the Brand Heritage book, it was aimed at style conscious men and women. And so I pulled from people who I felt represented New York style and New York fashion because. That fashion is the perfect fit for this shoe, right? So I'm looking at people like Kirby Jean Raymond. I'm looking at people like Tiana Taylor, Jerry Lorenzo, Devin on deck. Now, as far as the visual direction for the shoe goes, definitely has to be an embodied New York at its core. It's going to be simple with some nice color blocking because you have simplicity, but you also have elegance and boldness, right? Also want to include subtle details that are a smart nod to New York, which means designing the shoe to stand out in the night as well, creating that duality of the city that never sleeps because style never sleeps. To achieve this, I want there to be some sort of 3M reflective material all throughout the shoe and the glow in the dark element as well, really capturing that nightlife essence. As far as pricing goes, it needs to be relatively affordable, but not too accessible, right? We don't want it to scream cheap, it is, it's a stylish and elegant shoe. Now, as far as the competitive landscape goes, we are looking at Nike as being our top competitor with silhouettes such as the Nike Air Force One and the Air Max One, both being silhouettes that released around the same time as the original classic leather back in the 1980s. Both of those models are under $100. However, there are some colorways and collaborations between those models that can exceed that $100 price range. Now we need to look at who we're marketing this shoe to. Who is our target audience, right? And allow me to introduce to you Nathan Stewart. He's a visual merchandiser at JD Sports in Indianapolis. 
been with the company for three years, but has been a visual for the last year. He grew up in New York, but moved to Indiana for college, dropped out after his freshman year to pursue a career in sneakers and fashion. Super talented, super creative, always designing and making his own clothes, customizing his own sneakers. He enjoys watching people in downtown Indy to observe what they're wearing and how they rock their sneakers with their outfits, that combination between footwear and style. His ultimate career goal is to make a career out of doing what he loves without having to go back to college. Now, Nathan represents about 8% of our market. 21 years old, lives in the U.S., single. As I said, he's a visual merchandiser. Makes about $56,000 a year. Has some college education. And, you know, his goals are essentially to be his complete self in every environment he finds himself in with the freedom to express himself in whatever way he sees fit. He wants to establish his name as a designer in the fashion and sneaker world, complete his personal archive of classic silhouettes and contributions to, to sneaker culture. He wants to distinguish himself as a major influencer in the sneaker industry and open consumers' eyes to sneaker brands and collaborations outside of Jordan brand, right? Definitely into comfort as far as his needs go with his shoes. Comfort is up there. The history behind it um, definitely has to have some history. Um, color blocking is really essential too. He is a stylish person, so anything that he wears has to go with his shoes. He doesn't like hype shoes so much because he feels it takes away from the authenticity of the shoe itself. Hates resale culture, hates hype culture, and the shoe has to be unique. He's motivated by wearing and owning something that not a lot of people have or wear. He wants to learn the history behind sneaker culture and older silhouettes. He wants to be a style inspiration to his peers and social media followers and put people on to new shoe styles and silhouettes and collaborations, as well as bring integrity back to sneaker culture instead of chasing clout. Now, his frustrations include resale culture, taking away from the integrity of purchasing shoes, online sneaker drops, constantly selling out within seconds, crazy long lines for in-store shoe releases, people who buy hype shoes just for clout or bragging rights, oversaturation of sneaker collabs, the list goes on. Now, he shops at places for clothing like H&M, Goodwill, Grail, Depop, because he likes to keep it simple, low-key, has a few key staples, but his main staples for his outfits are his shoes. Now, when it comes to his shopping behaviors for shoes, he plans out his shoe releases, which ones he's going to buy a month in advance. Might make an impulse shoe purchase every now and then, depending on the release, if he sees it in person. Um, he could spend anywhere from $300 to $500 a month on average. Um, refuses to pay anything more than 50% above retail for a shoe on the resale market. And on average, spends around... $170. Now, as far as his lifestyle goes, he is the go-to person for style and shoe advice among his peers. He knows what shoe a person should get based off their personality. He's well-versed in that area. He knows how to outfit the shoe and use his work as a visual merchandiser as an opportunity to observe the customer's shopping trends and behaviors and how it ties to the shoes that they buy and wear. And values comfort, authenticity, Simplicity, self-expression, and integrity above everything else when it comes to the people he deals with, the shoes that he buys, the brands he buys from, etc. This is who this collab shoe is for. This collab shoe is going to be for Nathan Stewart. This is who we have to keep in mind, right? Now we can start the design process and figuring out how to tie those things together, right? And you can see a little time lapse of how I came up with the design the things I started to tweak, the things I really made sure I wanted to emphasize. And that comes to our final presentation of the duality shoe, right? And if you look, you know, you have your translucent blue side logo overlaying the sunset gray side logo. We have the classic 1978 Starcrest logo on the back tabs with the exposed foam on the tongue for a vintage look. Got the inter innovative optional lace lock system. Tying into those colors from New York, that those yellows, those tans, those browns, 
blue for the sky. But then we have our night mode, right? And this is something brand new with Reebok. A whole different personality, a duality of sorts, right? When the shoe is in the nighttime. So that translucent blue, after it's exposed to the sun, it glows green in the dark. That back tab is reflective. The tongue tag is reflective. The um, reflective side tag. Reflective 1977 Reebok word mark on the back heels. And contrast reflective stitching all throughout the shoe. Which explains the duality part. This is the Reebok and Life with Nike duality. So now we have the design, right? But now it's time to figure out the logistics. Definitely looking at JD Sports as our main, our key account. Because they really emphasize fashion and footwear. And because our target audience is someone who's very style conscious, we need an account that blends the two together perfectly. JD Sports is that account. APB, of course, they are a smaller boutique, have different boutiques, um, retail stores throughout the Southeast. And they are one of our sponsors too, so that is a very, very key account for us. Foot Locker, of course, they are all are one of our oldest and main sources for sneaker retail shops. But then StockX is something new. Definitely want to do an exclusive drop on StockX for the shoe to give people internationally, to give people in the Midwest and on the West Coast an opportunity to buy the shoe because we really want to focus on the East Coast since it is city-focused, big city-focused, New York-focused, um, New York-inspired. We definitely have that original duality colorway, but there is going to be a special FAMU edition specifically for the Tallahassee APB store, which I'm going to delve into a little bit soon. As far as distributions go, definitely going to focus on the East Coast, at least as far as brick and mortar stores go. So like our JD Sports, our Foot Locker, our APBs. And then, like I said earlier, that FAMU colorway is going to be exclusive to the Tallahassee store, the Tallahassee APB store. As far as in-store marketing goes, definitely want to have some interactive looping displays. And I'm going to go touch on that a little bit later when it comes to our social media and influencer marketing. I want there to be some sort of interactive display so you can see the difference between a, the day and the night mode. Let there be a walk-in dark environment with the shoe rotating in a glass case to really signify that elegance. Vintage style ad posters for the shoe want have a vintage vibe with a bit of a modern twist. And a collaborative collection with support black colleges only available at that Tallahassee APB store, which I'm going to delve into a little bit sooner. Celebrity guest appearances plus fireside chat for the launch parties, both in New York and in our APB stores. And that's going to kind of wrap up our product ranging, our accounts, and our in-store and kind of marketing brainstorming. And now for the ultimate marketing plan, right? This is Project Style Never Sleeps for the Reebok Classic Leather Legacy Duality. Learn about our target audience. I'll just go through that one more time. Um, as explained in the Brand Heritage book, the Reebok Classic Leather is aimed at style-conscious men and women. Now, this rollout intends to appeal to the target audience, mainly Nathan Stewart. So we are calling on some of the most prominent style-conscious men and women to get involved with this duality shoe. Now, with the shoe being heavily inspired by New York fashion and style, all aspects of our marketing will reflect the essence of the city, but we're making sure that it's not so exclusive that it alienates people who aren't familiar with New York style and fashion. As far as our official marketing channels go, consistency is key. And we have three channels, right? Our in-store marketing with the interactive experience, exploring style and time. Social media marketing, a visually attractive story by one of today's best visual storytellers. And influencer marketing, the style-conscious people that style-conscious men and women look to. As far as in-store marketing goes, definitely envision an evening 
launch party, after party vibe, complete with paparazzi, live DJ, light refreshments, and red carpet to have people show off their outfits, really emphasizing on that style aspect. <clears throat> the theme is New York City nightlife, late night, late evening when New York stylish people come out to show out, embodying the dark mode feature of this duality shoot. This, combined with vintage-style Reebok posters featuring our influencers, show how timeless the classic leather legacy shoe is. Now, with the APB exclusive, right, we're partnering with Support Black Colleges and FAMU to deliver a special silhouette and special colorway of the duality shoe, still featuring a lot of the same features. But Tallahassee is home to one of the premier APB boutiques, as well as FAMU and HBCU. An exclusive FAMU colorway of the shoe is a perfect way to capture the Florida consumer base. Now, Support Black Colleges is a popular clothing brand with the mission to uplift, inspire, and encourage others to support HBCUs. Their clothing has been worn by numerous professional athletes, celebrities, and influencers, and collaborating with them on an exclusive FAMU hoodie that's only available at the Tallahassee APB store would not only increase the hype surrounding the drop, but also attract some of SBC's consumer base as well. Now, Gerard Anderson will be the creative director for our social media marketing, from the pictures for our posters to filming the video content. And like I said earlier, the story is a story of timelessness of style and creativity and how the two go hand in hand. It's the shoes that allows people to express themselves and never stop creating, which is consistent between generations, building on the timelessness of the classic leather silhouette. Gerard will suit a series of videos, interviews, and pictures to be distributed via our in-store digital displays, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook ads, and our posters and Instagram posts. Now, Gerard's visual style, according to himself, his goal with every photo and video is to capture the beauty of the back experience. Now, considering that sneaker culture is historically an inherent part of the black experience and the black experience has contributed a lot to New York style, I want to capture the passion, creativity, and style of our influencers, all of whom are black. And you can see a visual representation of his style and the visual direction that we want to go with with our advertising. So as far as video go, we're looking at full-length ads, around 60 seconds for YouTube, 30-second variations for Instagram and Twitter, and 30-second interview spots for each of the inter influencers, as well as a full edition interview with each and every single one of them to just be distributed on their platforms and our major Instagram, Facebook, Twitter handles, right? And then we're targeting first looks, access, on our Instagram, Reebok, APB, JD Sports, social media pages, and looking for features from Sneaker News, Complex, and Hypebeast to really gain the attention and the hype for this shoe drop. Now let's meet the influencers, the spearheads for our influence marketing strategy. The big names who are the main faces of our social media marketing content. They include sneakerheads and style inspirations, and are meant to create hype surrounding the shoe. And their affiliation alone will spark the interest and essentially create more consumers. And they are also the special guests and the panelists at the launch event for the shoe. So we have Kirby John Raymond, fashion designer and storyteller. We have Zendaya, an actress, singer, and model. Lil Yachty, rapper and songwriter. And Tiana Taylor, just a renaissance woman, singer, songwriter, actress, dancer, choreography, director, and model. Now, as far as our micro-influencers go, they are our direct bridge to our consumers. <clears throat> they are respected and well-known fashion and sneaker influencers, and each of them will be tasked with creating content such as early reviews, unboxings, style guides, etc. on their specialty platforms. So we have Alan Onaya, Master Instagram Outfit Curator. We have Sherlina Nim, Instagram and YouTube style queen. 
Jock Slade, the YouTube sneaker unboxing and review king, and Devin Anderson, the bite-sized style advice ninja. Alan will be in charge of Instagram and focus his efforts on there. Sherlina will be focused on her efforts on Instagram and YouTube. Jacques would be doing his thing with the unboxing experience. And Devin will be focused on creating style guides on TikTok and Instagram Reels, two of the most popular influencer platforms today. And that's going to wrap it up for this visual design pitch. Thank you for listening. Again, my name is Isaac Reeves, AKA Life with Ike, and I create brand experiences. Unique creative storytelling.